Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to business management class. My name is Olushola Oo. In our permitment class, we discuss the concept of administration. And we argued out that the word administration is synonymous to management. And we also establish the fact that administration is applicable to our everyday life. And of course, administration has two faces. We may mention that the idea of administration can be discussed in the, from the angle of private. And also the idea of administration can also be discussed from the angle of public. So this means that the concept of administration is a general phenomenon to human endeavor, to human life. So in our everyday life activity, the idea or the concept of administration is viable. And that is why we say administration is very important. Administration is very important to our lives. Then we also discuss the concept of public administration. So we define public administration from the angle of different scholars. That is what scholars from the discipline of public administration pursue down about public administration and from different years, which means that the concept of administration has been defined by different scholars in their different dispensation. Then, this afternoon, we have very simple topics to discuss. And the simple topic here is the principles of public administration. That is, those things that are very jammy, that they are very paramount to administration, particularly public. And it's not only public alone, also in private, because in countries of the world today, we have both public firms and public firms. So the principles we'll be talking about this afternoon is applicable to both private firms or companies. There is also applicable to public firms or company. And not only that, also public corporation as well. So these principles are very important. They are palaku to the concept of administration. Now, when we talk of principles, the first principles here is what we call principle of political direction. Principle of political direction. Now, since our focus is on public administration, in public firm or public affairs, the head of the affairs is the political leaders. We we'll talk of public because public administration is a subordinate institution to government body. We are not saying that public administration is totally a new body. No, it is not a total, but a total new body on its own, but it is a subordinate institution from the part of government that will help to augment the work, the exercise, the functions, the principles, the runnings, the administration, the management of 
government affairs. And that's why we talk of the first principle, which is the principle of political direction. So it means that the political office orders gives directives to civil servants and public servants. They dictate to them what to do and what not to do. So this principle means that public servants and civil servants are expected to obey their political leaders because under governmental structure, the APS administrative office is the political office. And the highest in countries of the world is the office of the presidency. So the president of a particular country can dictate to civil servants, to public servants, on what to do and what not to do. That is what we refer to as principle or political direction. So they give them directive, tell them what to do and what not to do. And of which they must obey or abide by it. So public corporation run their exercise or their activities or policies in consonance to the direction given to them by their political leaders or the political office holders, ranging from councillor to local government chairman to house of reps to senator to deputy go to governor to deputy governor to vp vice president and to the president himself so authority or direction follows this process and public administration have to obey by this principle then the second principle is the principle of authority i will say principle of political direction then the principle of authority is very sequanot too in the sense that the political office holders possess authority the political offices is entangled with political authority and political authority is what gives this political office order political power to dictate to direct to give instruction and these instructions or directions must be obeyed by public office by public administrators be it the public servants or civil servants so authority is right because it is that power that is legitimate that is given to the political office holders and authority is quite different from power but it is very tony to separate power from authority although the differences of power between authority and power is very slim so the, the concept of authority here is that the citizenry of that country where the political office orders legislate over gave them the authority that okay you are our leaders we have surrendered our rights to you you have it so run the affairs for us so and this authority rests upon the police. so it is this authority that the political office order use to legislate the affairs of the state and that's why i say public administration is carried by persons who have certain powers or authority 
So, and these people that have this power or authority are the political office holder. And then in public administration also, authority also flow. At the apex of public administration, we have the PAMSEC, permanent secretary. So authority flows from the top to the bottom. You see it now. So authority flow from top to down. So even in mini, even in mini administration, even in mini administration, authority also flow in mini administration. Then the third principle is what we refer to as principle of public responsibility. Principle of public responsibility. And what of, of responsibility? Responsibility simply means, means that they are accountable to whatever they are signed to do. And that's why I would say the third principle that follows is the principle of public responsibility. And responsibility is what matters in public administration, be it in civil service or public corporation. And even responsibility is also matter in private administration, that is firms or companies owned by private individuals. Responsibility is very important. And as a matter of fact, responsibility is the soul of being responsible. Is the soul of being responsible. So assignments are given to different departments in public administration, including private administration or private firm. So it is the responsibility of people or the department that an assignment is assigned to to carry out a particular responsibility or particular task as related to the assignment given to that department or bestowed on that particular individual in that office. And generally, the responsibility of public administration is to serve the government, serving the people as well, then in interests of government because the assignment given to public administrator is to serve the people and these people are served or the citizens are served on behalf of the government in quotes or in general on behalf so the service that public school render, this service is rendered on behalf of the government of that state or of that country. So it is the act of being responsible, responsibility. So, and that is why when a particular public administration came to being, through the act of parliament, the services that that department or that firm will discharge will be stated in the code of conduct that establish that department or that firm or that industry or that public corporation. And it is this assignment of work that established this public administration or that firm that is the responsibility of that corporation to discharge and that makes 
the firm or the department responsible. And that's why over the time, if you, you, you see people going to National Assembly to defend their budget. And the essence of this defense is to make sure that they are responsible for whatever that the constitution have established that that firm or that administration or that public firm for so responsibility is very important in public administration as a matter of fact is the major key for administration is the major key for administrative purpose now, the fourth principle is the principle of social necessity. Social necessity. We will talk of social necessity. That is something that affects everybody. Social. Something that pertains everyone. Something that pertains every member or every citizen that resides in that country or that state. The necessity, when you say something is necessary, it means that such thing is very palicule. It is very sequanon to people, to the citizen. So the social necessity, as we can point to, is the fact that it is the duty of public administration, the duty of public administration to take social actions, recruitment, safety, provision of amenities, make life bearable for people. And that is why I say here that social necessity is inevitable. It's inevitable and indispensable. Inevitable means that we cannot underscore it. We cannot do without it. So it is responsible to every member, even to the government itself, even to the public servant himself, themselves, even to the civil servants themselves, even to the honorary member of this society or of that country even to demand man man woman on the street it is very so safety is very inevitable and so on and so forth then the fifth principle here the fifth principle is a principle of efficiency one thing is to have fantastic idea. Another thing is to build it. The another great thing is to make it work. Is to put it into workability. And for it to go into workable stage, the government makes provision for what we call civil servants, public servants. And that's why we have civil service commission. The civil service commission is in charge of civil servants because the political head of the state cannot legislate in all the matters. Therefore, government or the political institution make provision for this. As I said, no governmental machinery can be successful unless civil service is if efficient. And this civil service we are talking about, which we call civil servants, our parents, our brothers, our sisters. So, for any country to develop, for any country to advance, for any country to experience 
drastic growth the civil servant must be on the desk they must sit up to this task of responsible or be responsible by discharging their responsibilities because all the institutions established by the government they are made up of the civil servant and public servants so if they fail to discharge their responsibility judiciously then the state will suffer then when the state suffered then the country will suffer and when the country suffers, it will affect all and sundry it will affect all and sundry that it will affect everybody in that state and it means that nothing will work in that state or in that country so when we when you go into comparative analysis of public administration why public administration strive in developed nation or advanced nation is the main that is the mentality the philosophy of the civil servant over there so why is it that our government is sleeping is because of the myopic philosophy and reasoning of our civil servants and as a matter of fact let me say this quote and unquote the civil servants are more intelligent than the political office holders that is one then two the civil servants are more educated than the political office holders three the civil servant know the nooks and the crannies of the government government changes the civil servant or civil service does not they enjoy tenure of office so in Nigeria case every four year new government comes to power and that's why only one of the principles of civil service is what we call the principle of neutrality so this principle of neutrality under civil service try the civil servant to serve any government that come to power with their ultimate ultimate power and reasoning and commit commitment and responsibility that's it so the principle of efficiency lies at the table of the civil service and public corporation the civil servant and public servant so if these public servants wake up to their responsibility and the civil service also wake up to their responsibility i bet you nigeria will be a better place for all of us as a matter of fact africa will be a better place so the principle is very important in fact efficiency is the calm of public administration the sixth principle is the principle of organization organization in this content has to do with arrangement socialization so it is the, one of the principle of public administration you see public administration including private firms private companies private industry and rest are not horrible 
they must they are organized firms they are institutionalization of arrangements and that is why the second principle point us to the principle of authority so there must be an hierarchical structure or socialization there must be ecological arrangement of the system or of the institution or public administration and of course one man cannot serve it all one department cannot do it all one body cannot execute all the responsibility all and that is why in every institutionalized firm you have people at the top beneath it you have another set of people beneath it you have another set of people beneath it you have another set of people that will do that we organize the place that will coordinate the place that will make sure that everything are in correlation and at the end of the day the essence of the establishment of that fair will be attained or achieved so it will not be defeated so organization is very important in fact even to individual person if you are a human being and you fail to organize yourself such life we look tattered at the end of the day the person we meet is water load we live a wretched life have you wonder when you meet each person on the streets their eye is there every part of his body is there but he's begging for harm on the streets so if you check back the life of such individual at the time when such person ought to organize is or alive the person fail in the area of organization so the same thing applicable to firms have you wondered some firms okay let's take for instance the cocoa industry we have in nigeria in those days the cutting industry in kaduna in those days well, what happens to them at our very own eyes these wonderful firms die look at the kampala industry in kaduna in kano in uh, ibadan ogun state they died now today we go to ghana to buy a kara dress kampala dress in Kamp in kampala imagine why why these things fail and these firms die in our own very is because failure of organization so it's very important let us look at the principle of public relations that is the third the seventh principle rather public relation is very sequential it means we need good interaction welfareism taking care of one another you see if you go to advanced nation the government in advanced nation make provision for welfareism where each people are catered for unemployed citizens are catered for in fact government paid unemployed graduates in advanced nation and with what government paid them they can manage their life for the period of a particular month before that month so they don't need to depend in totality on their parents even the working class people also they don't need to spend the little that government pay pay them in catering for their old parents age parents because government take care of them government give them little token so the principle of public relation is very sequential when we talk of administration and so on and so forth so we'll be stopping here because of time 
I have this assignment for you. In 98 English words, discuss the history of Nigeria public administration. Take note, there's a clause there. Before the coming of the white man, the way, the, the way we, we arrange our administration, discuss the history before the white man came. Yes. Any question? Any question? Do you have any question? If there is no question, we have come to the end of today's class. And if you are watching this class online on our YouTube channel, I encourage you to keep on subscribing to our YouTube channel. And we promise to give you the best. You have a wonderful day.